Hello, I am your host Phil Miller and this is a continuation video for the digitizing a correlation of map units in ArcGIS. If you have seen um, the previous digitizing of a correlation of map units or CMU, you are right on track to continue working with this step. If you haven't seen that video, go back to my channel and start with that one. That will give you a good start of where things are. Now, if you're continuing from that video, what we can see right here is here's the finished product. So let's zoom into that. So I've gone ahead and finished digitizing and coloring the map based off of what we uh, were working with in the previous video. So here is that final correlation of map units. All of the units on the map and cross sections are represented here. And um, one of the things that we can do with this is from here we can join it with our description of map units table in order to create the final layout that we see here with our description of map units. Now this becomes a very dynamic um, layout and dynamic description of map units legend when we do this process. So one of the things we'll need to do right off of the bat is go ahead and open our description of map units table and take a look at that. And here is our description of map units. One of the comments that I will make is for further information on this, it might be beneficial for you to review the NCGMP09 version 1.1 format for the data model that we're using. Um, just so you know, this video will become obsolete as soon as version 2.0 comes out version 2.0 will be called GEMS data model. So this is a data model for digitizing geologic maps and uh, housing the digital information uh, in a very compact and uniform format. Uh, this is approved by the USGS, the Bureau of Geology has adopted it, the Arizona Geologic Survey has adopted it, and many others. So this is very robust and becoming more ubiquitous throughout the community. So I recommend taking a look at it at the bare minimum and maybe adopting your standards to match that. So that document goes through and talks about what each of these features are. And I'm going to recommend that you go through and read the portion of the description of map units before continuing on. I can go over it here, but it's much easier to read through their documentation than it would be. Uh, for me to try and explain it in detail. But what I can do then is once you've read that, we can use this as a demonstration purpose of how to get all of these fields entered in. So currently, we're looking at the description of map units for that geologic quadrangle. And we can see that we have a map unit field, a label field, a name field, a full name field, and we include the age in that. There is the age field the actual text description of the unit, the general lithology code, the general lithology confidence, our hierarchy key, our sorting key, the paragraph style, and then ultimately once we have all of those input in and we are satisfied that we haven't made any typos and we've proofread everything, we can go ahead and input all of those fields into symbology. And the way I tend to do that is I come in start an editing session. I do a field calculator on this and I do the hierarchy key. So our sorting field is the very first entry in there. Plus a delimiter. plus the map unit, plus our delimiter again, plus the full name, our delimiter again, and description. Now, one other comment that I will make is sometimes it's really nice if you're actually doing a final layout on this to have in what type of heading or unit this is. So I'll go ahead and add in another delimiter here, 
and also put in our paragraph style. So that'll end up looking exactly like we have here. We have our hierarchy key, our paragraph style, our map unit, our full name of the map unit, and the text description of that unit. So for the water, it's less useful, but we can see that for the heading of quaternary, we have our quaternary heading, and then the units that fall underneath that are the unit QA3, which is an alluvial deposit that is Holocene in age, and then is cross-bedded, etc., etc., and this is the full description of that map unit. Now, this is really nice because then what we can do is we can come to our correlation of map units, and once we have all of our description of map units populated, like I said, proofread, use the field calculator to calculate that field, we do a join and relate. And I'm going to remove this one so we can go through the process of actually creating that join so that we can see it in its entirety. So we're going to add the field that the join will be based on from the correlation of map unit polys which is map unit, we're going to join to the description of map units off of map unit poly. Now, correlation of map unit poly, map unit must match your description of map units, map unit field. If they don't, you will have joins that actually won't have anything to join to. So this is where a point of error comes in. And if you have further questions about that, feel free to email me or ask me. I have no problem answering that. But you'll see that if you type in map space unit, let me use a better example. So in our description of map units, we have our QA3. Let's pretend, for example, that this is QA space 3 in our description of map units. But in our map unit poly, the polygon, the actual polygon feature, if one of these says QA3 without that space, it won't be able to join to that. So this join will break. And I'm going to do this as a test example to showcase that. So we're going to see that our QA3 space here in map unit. So let's save those edits. This does not match our QA3 here. See, QA no space in map unit. So we're going to see that that specific field will break when we do this. It won't actually join. Let me rephrase that. It won't break. It won't have anything to join to. So we can see that we've wiped out all the information here. So let's do our join. Let's, let's go over that process again. We're going to join CMU map unit polys off of the field map unit to our description of map units off the field map unit. I say OK. The join actually happens. We say OK. And now if we open our attribute table for that, we'll see that we have all of this extra information over here. Previously, CMU map unit polys ended right here. And if you want, rewind the video just a second, you'll see that these fields were not part of this table. And that's because we've done the join. So now we have the correlation of map unit polys joined with our description of map units table. So if we now scroll to QA3, we will see that that entry is null across the board because of our QA3 space, QA space 3, versus our description of map units, which has QA3 without the space. And if I fix that, this join will remedy itself. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I'm going to open the attribute table again. I am going to remove the space, save my edits, close this again, let it get time to refresh, open the attribute table again, and we'll now see that our QA3 
has an actual join that occurred. So see how we've corrected that issue? That's a very common issue, and we'll see that uh, come up more often than not when working with this process. So it's a point of, content, uh, of caution. And one of the most common ways that I actually see that is not with a space in the middle of the text. Commonly, we'll see a space at the beginning. So there'll be a space right here. Or commonly, they will also and or be a space at the end like that. So that's a point to be cautious of. Don't add spaces before your map unit. Don't add spaces after your map unit. Okay, so I've cleaned that up. We'll deselect. We'll save our edits. So now that we have this join in place, we can actually use this symbol field to symbolize our correlation to map unit polys. So currently they're all being labeled a default pattern. So let's open up the symbology tab for our layer properties. We're going to symbolize off of a category of unique values and that unique value is going to be the description of map units symbol field. We'll add all values. The nice part about this is they show up hierarchically. So we have 12 that are unlabeled. And that would be these ones here over on the side, the age ones. So let's make those hollow to begin with. And then we'll say apply. And we'll see that that description, that symbol description is now driving our symbology and we'll see that it's driving our description of map units as well. So let's oops, let's go back a step. If we do this off of a single symbol and say OK, our description of map units is right here and there's one polygon and no description for it because all of these are exactly the same. So it's not as useful. What we can do is because we did the join we can symbolize each of these individually and then make our legend use the correlation of map unit, map unit polys, to drive that description of map unit legend. So this is a legend over here that we inserted by doing insert legend. So let's refix our symbology to symbolize off of symbol. Make sure we collect the set correct one because there's multiple symbols. There's the symbol from our correlation of map units, map unit poly. And there's the symbol from our description of map symbols. So we want to use that one. Add all values. We'll go ahead and make this hollow again. And now all of the symbology for these layers is represented over here in this description. We can see that because of that join, it's using this field right here, the label, in order to populate the legend item. The benefit of doing this is that our description of map units color for the legend item will match the color of the correlation of map units polygon. So we can see that in that legend, the only thing that's in there is the correlation of map unit polys. The next thing we can do is if we've picked colors for our map like we have here and matching here in the cross section, we can make these colors match here as well in both of these the correlation of map units and the legend description of map units. 
So I'm going to go ahead and start at the beginning with, and the other thing that's nice about doing, having the hierarchy key in is these are also sorting hierarchically. So they're sorted based off of the layer or the heading that's needed. So since this is unit QA3 and I've exported a style, I can double click, type in QA3, and that's my color for QA3. And we can do this for all of the units that we have if we've already established a color for them, a style for them. And so on and so forth. And we'll see that when we use those, those colors will update here in the legend as well. See how they've updated? So this is one way that we can make sure that our correlation of map units drives our description of map units. And it's a cross check because our correlation of map units should contain all of the units that are on the map and all of the units that are in every cross section. This way we can ensure that the description of map units contains all of the units itself. We don't have to cross check this or create um, spreadsheets or anything like that to verify what's on the map and what's on the cross sections and make sure that it's in the description of map units. As long as we make sure all of our units are in the correlation of map unit, we can make our description of map units table drive this legend item. So let's go ahead and close this out and open it back up fresh. So once we have all of our colors picked, we can see that they match from our correlation of map units to our description of map units. And we can do this process of color matching through both the map and the cross sections. Either way works. I tend to find it easier to pick my colors from the correlation of map units, decide what best works here, and then propagate that back to the map. And sometimes you'll find that that doesn't work, so you have to make adjustments. But here we should see the proximity and age relationship of things to one another. So that is an overview of how the correlation of map units can drive your description of map units. From the New Mexico Bureau of Geology and Mineral Resources, I have been your host, Phil Noah. This has been an overview of the correlation of map units part two digitizing process and more specifically how to digitize and display the description of map units from your correlation of map units in an ArcGIS NCGMP09 layout. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at any time and I will hopefully make a video regarding your question. Thank you very much for your time and continue watching.